Okay, so uh, what we want to do is get our calculator here. We want to put our, our, our equation into uh, sequence mode and then have a look at the, the graph. Okay, we never actually did this for an arithmetic sequence, but I'm going to show you what it looks like for a geometric sequence. So let's go to our calculator and we want the, the function 1 over 5 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. So we'll go to our calculator. We want to make sure that we're in sequence mode. So we're going to go to mode and then go down. Remember how to put your calculator in sequence mode. Okay, like this. Okay, and let's uh, go to our y equals editor and clear anything that's in there. Uh, but of course we leave n min is always defaulted to one. So we want to leave that there. n min refers to the minimum term number. So the minimum term number usually is 1. We always work with the first term. But sometimes there was an occasion to work with the zeroth term. Okay. Now u at n defines my, uh, my function here. Okay. So I'm just going to clear this ink from before. u at n defines my function. So we said it was 1 fifth. I'm going to put it in as 0 0.2 because I prefer to put it in a calculator like this. Uh, 0 0.2. And then the common ratio we look back here, the common ratio was 2 to the power of n minus 1. Common ratio, of course, being 2. So we'll go back here, and we're going to put bracket 2, uh, bracket to the power of n minus 1. And if you click the X button, of course, n comes up now in sequence mode. And make sure you use the minus sign, n minus 1. Okay. Remember that I don't need to put anything at u at n min. This is only for recursively defined sequences where I need to provide a starting point. Okay, so there's my my uh, function. Let's have a look at the table first and see what what the terms of the sequence are. So we go to second function table, and you can see that the table here starts at n equals one. So the first term is 0.2, the next term is 0.4, and then 0 0.8, 1.6, 3.2. Does that does that describe the terms of a geometric sequence? What's the common ratio then? Two. two. I'm doubling each time, aren't I? But the first term is 0.2. Let's have a look and see what the graph looks like then. So again, I need to set an appropriate window. And we haven't been here yet. If you go to your window, your window looks very different than what it has looked like in the past as well. Let's make sure that we understand what's in the window. N min is 1. N max is 10. So that means I'm going to look at the first 10 terms, essentially. Plot start is 1. Plot step is how much I want to increase by. So I could jump you know, from term 1 to term 3 to term 5 to term 7 if I wanted my step to be more than 1. But I want to keep my plot step just at 1. Nothing, neat, nothing to do there. And then the rest of the uh, parameters simply define our window so that we can see the terms of the sequence. Okay. So usually we would start, if I want to look at the first 10 terms, the x-axis should correspond to the first 10 terms. So let's go between 0 and 10. Okay. Now I have to think about what y values I want to see. All right. If I want to see 10 terms, then I have to think about approximately how large is the 10th term here. Well, my rule, my rule, remember, <coughs> is this. Uh, 1 fifth times 2 to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so n minus 1, if n was 10, then I'd have 1 fifth times 2 to the power of 9. Well, we just learned that 2 to the power of 9 was 512. And so I want a fifth of 512. Well, a fifth of 512 is approximately 100, isn't it? A little bit more than 100, because a fifth of 500 is 100. So if I, this is again what I mean by an educated guess. So if I, uh, if I set my y max to somewhere around 100, let's make it 120. <coughs> okay, let's make the y max around 120. And let's change our scale. Let's change it to 10, for example. And then hit the graph button. All right, and... What do I actually see? <clears throat> I see a bunch of dots. Okay, a bunch of dots. Why do I see dots and not a line? Because that's the sequence, because that's the sequence right? 
the sequence is not defined for anything in between my n values, is it? I, there's no such thing as the 1.5 term, right? Or the 1.8 term, okay? This is only defined when n is 1, 2, 3, 4. So hence, I see only dots. Now let's check out the terms of the sequence. I can, I can check out the terms of the sequence by using the trace button. So if I hit the trace button, let's see what comes up. Okay, Using the trace button, I see the cursor flashes on the first dot where n is equal to 1, and here it says x is 1 and y is 0.2. Well, what's the y equal 0.2? Doesn't that represent the first term? Okay, so what happens if I use my right arrow key now? Use your right arrow key and scroll through the terms. Okay, so use your right arrow key here to scroll through the terms. And there's 0.4. Again, 0.8. Look at the Y values here. Look at how they're changing. Okay, 1.6, 3.2, okay. 6.4, 12.8. See how it goes up? It just jumps from term to term. So I can see the terms of the sequence just in the graphing screen and using the trace function, 51.2, 102.4, and so forth. Okay?